Well, ta-da! <laughs> this a little device here, it has very interesting features. I want to tell you my experience with the Dwarf 2 reconnecting. It's a smart telescope with artificial intelligence and a lot of other who knows what I think it's aliens. The smart telescope is the future in astrophotography for amateur astrophotographers who don't want to go the extra mile or can do it. Complete setup such as the one that I have. This little guy right here runs from $500 to $600. Yeah, the Dwarf 2, which is the one that I have, comes with a filter to photograph the sun and also have kind of like a light pollution filter if you want to photograph at night. Tonight is the night. Um, Finally, I think I'm going to have a clear, clear night, clear sky. So tonight I am going to test the Dwarf 2. And at the same time, I'm going to be taking photos down here with the uh, Sky Watcher from the Sky Dome, uh, one of the star clusters that is somewhere right here in the uh, uh, Southwest, <laughs> just like the airline. <laughs> Dark frames are very important in astrophotography. They will definitely help to improve your images as it will reduce the hot pixels and noise. To take dark frames with the uh, Dwarf Telescope was very easy. All you need to do is uh, take the telescope outside right before your imaging session and uh, set it up on the app Put the uh, lens in the home position, telescope in the bag. I wanted to put a blanket um, on top of it just to be sure that it is going to be in complete darkness. And 10 minutes later, it was done. My first attempt to connect the uh, app with the telescope failed, so I have to redo everything, uh, all the initial settings, and right after that, everything connected perfectly. It's a very fast process when you compare to a regular telescope setup, it takes a long time. So pretty soon I had my telescope connected to my app and I had my first image. It's also tracking the stars right now, even though that it is on photo mode. And find some bright stars. In this case, I decided to do it manually, move the telescope a little bit. Uh, that joystick, uh, it's a little bit sensitive for the first time. With a little bit of practice, it was easier, and then I started using it, but on my first attempt, I have to manually move the telescope, and now I needed to increase the exposure time. That way I can have a, a much better view on the screen and be sure uh, that I am on some bright stars. I am pointing at this time at Vega, not Polaris, so I am more towards the northwest of uh, Polaris, which are stars that I can identify clearly and um, have a little bit of problems with Polaris. I am right now in Astro Mode, and Astro Mode is doing its uh, plate solving. <laughs> And I think, I mean, this is just amazing how quick it is. And there you go, it's trying to do the first calibration, uh, plate solving. And it was confirmed in a matter of maybe under two minutes, the whole process. 
So now I finally have a clear, more clear view of where I am, but totally plate sold and calibrated. Amazing. I love star clusters, so of course my first target was going to be star clusters. And in this case, uh, I pick Messier 11, which is the wild duck cluster. And right now it's in a pretty good pos position. I saw it in my location, more towards the uh, southwest uh, of uh, where my telescope is. And uh, it did the plates all pretty quick and everything was great until <laughs> the image came back it has been confirmed that it's a tree of course i uh well i am surrounded by trees i'm in the smoky mountains so that was actually pretty funny for me but uh right away let's just go ahead and and get a different target and looking real quick into the uh, catalog, celestial catalog that uh, Dwarf has, of course, the uh, great uh, Hercules star cluster, Messier 13. It should be a good target. And the plate solving was really quick. I'm very, very impressed with how quick this little guy works. It's amazing. It has been confirmed and there it is. That is Messier 13. Oh my God, wow. <laughs> I think this is really, really cool considering it's a tiny telescope smaller than a shoebox. And this is the part uh, of the process where you have to have a little bit of some basic knowledge uh, and photography to be successful with it um, and I started playing a little bit uh, with the exposure time that way I can have a better view I need to be sure that the stars are in focus as, as best as I can and different different settings uh, for star clusters uh, normally use anywhere from 5 to 12 15 seconds that that will be on my Nikon camera as an example for the uh, Skywatcher telescope the big one I'm doing the sweet spot seems to be 30 seconds uh, exposure time uh, so I just we just need to play a little bit with the settings it all depends so many conditions like the moon was out uh, it was a relatively bright sky so just play a little bit with the settings uh, exposure gain uh, there's all kind of things I will definitely be doing a lot of videos on settings for the uh, Dwarf 2. But once again, I am so impressed uh, with this little telescope, how, how quick uh, you can get some decent astro images. I mean, it really is amazing for the size. Uh, the precision is really good too. And of course, I have to play a little bit uh, with uh, the infrared mode on pass or cut. Um, not familiar too much on this uh, setting, so I will have to experiment a little bit more and I will definitely will be doing more tutorials on all of the settings and go more into the specific but that is Messier 13 the great Hercules cluster oh my god okay very good so um, we are at a little bit over 450 images right now pretty much at 45 minutes or so uh, when I work uh, with my Skywatcher uh, Quattro it's a 10 inch Newtonian telescope with the great cameras and everything I do about an hour and a half to get good pictures images of the star cluster so I am impressed right now very good so now I am going to do the second target of the night let's just go ahead and connect again Definitely connecting. <laughs> okay, and we got it. It's already tracking, and actually that doesn't look too bad. 
I may just uh, manually try to find this, which I think it's easier for me. It seems that uh, it is uh, relatively in focus, not bad at all. Let me just go to Astro. So it's doing the calibration process again. Wow, impressive. <laughs> Very good, so the calibration has been successful and I just need to confirm, uh, I, <laughs> I am still, uh, I don't know, this is crazy. It has to be aliens, what else? So let's just go ahead and confirm that. And I am going to try with Andromeda. Oh, wow. So I am pretty sure that is Andromeda. This is good. So uh, <laughs> um, that part is done. I don't think it's anything here. Okay, so I am going to do a FITS format. 450 images, two by two, been in, and displays tag confirmed. I want to add the exposure time. I am going to increase this to 15 seconds. Very good, so um, this is something, the infrared light uh, that I need to study a little bit more and understand exactly what it means as I don't have this on my telescope. 15 seconds, gain 80, that's okay. Pretty much default settings. And let's just go ahead and start. Okay, so um, I am seeing that uh, the stars are a little bit oblongated. <laughs> I probably need to lower the exposure time. Wow. So uh, the stars are a little bit long, so I think I needed to probably lower a couple of seconds uh, on the exposure time and maybe just to work on some other settings uh, for the future. But so far, this is pretty impressive. I have been walking all over this telescope tonight. Normally, you know, you don't want to walk too much around it. You don't want to turn lights here as I am doing recordings. And I am disrupting this poor little guy a lot tonight. And still I am impressed with the photos, the images that I'm seeing. And it seems to be pretty stable. We're doing good, little thing. We're doing good. We are our 200 and 25 images and 225 stacked and it's looking pretty good. So I am going to do probably around 300 instead of uh, 450 as the uh, moon is coming. <laughs> it's showing up right here behind me. So it, it really has been a bright night too. The moon is out tonight. So I restarted the telescope, which is very quick. It's just um, trying to find it right now. Connecting the camera. And we are on. So um, all I need to do now, and I prefer to do this part manually as I, um, <laughs> it's easier for me. Very good. Now we are back into astro mode. And it's time to do a calibration again. I have no idea what are the settings for the moon. Um, I would think it's obviously extremely fast exposure time, just like a DSLR. Very good. So we already have the calibration. Okay, let me go to the catalog and let's go to the moon. Ah, it failed. Let 
may hit the limit. Well, I don't think so. It's not that high. So I may do it just manually, get it there. Okay, now we have it. Okay, so there's the moon. We are in moon mode. <laughs> kind of like just try to focus a little bit there. Um, we probably need to lower a lot the exposure time. See when I see it. Okay, there you see it. Let's just go back to the wide. Okay, so now I have it right there in the middle. Let me just switch. I probably have to work a little bit on the uh, exposure time. Okay, so finally I'm starting to get some results. I have never done this. It seems that we have to do some out of focus. Oh my goodness, there it is. Woo! Oh! So this is a very, very, very fast exposure time. And it's starting to look good as I find a good spot here because, oh, I don't want it overexposed. Let me just increase a little bit the sharpness and see what happened. Okay. It's not that bad. <laughs> I don't know about the uh, white balance. Okay, let's just do a more natural look right there. I would like to move it a little bit more into the center of the screen. Just some tiny movement here. There, you were doing much better. Okay, let's do 100 of them stacked together. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Okay, so this has been very exciting. Uh, solar imaging is something that I have never done. Um, I'm sure I'm going to do it in the future with my Sky Watcher uh, Quattro 10 and or maybe with another mount that I have. I need to buy the filters, the uh, ND filters to protect the camera, to protect the telescope, protect everything. Uh, right now I have a towel right here on top of the uh, computer as the sun is very strong. And I think the images in the end are going to look very distant. Take a look. I was so excited to photograph the sun that I forgot to record the screen, but this is the first video that I took of the uh, sun and the process was extremely easy, similar to the star clusters, galaxy, and the moon. This is my first raw image of the sun. Wow. Well, I think the demonstration speaks for itself. I was able to do everything in one night. Uh, star clusters, stars, the moon, and a galaxy. The Dwarf Telescope has a lot of features. It's a lot of fun to do. Uh, it's easy, it's fast, and actually it's very precise. I was very uh, impressed with the uh, precision and how well it frame the targets right in the middle of the screen on the first attempt. So please subscribe to my channel and follow me as I am going to do a lot of tutorials on the uh, Dwarf Telescope and be sure to watch my upcoming video on editing the photos that I took with the Dwarf Telescope. Thank you for watching.